Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkshire, host, and our guest is David Cameron, a professor of political science at Yale and the director of the program in European Union Studies at the Macmillan Center. He's been on the show a number of times to talk about the ongoing Eurozone debt crisis. Because of the European Central Bank's announcement last summer that it will do whatever it takes to ensure the survival of the euro, there has been a sense that the worst of the crisis is over and that the euro would survive. But that was before the Italian election. Today, Professor Cameron will discuss what happened in the Italian election and how that may affect the survival of the eurozone. Welcome, Professor Cameron. It's good to be back. So, let's talk about the Italian election. Winners, losers, well, tell us the, about it. Well, the election uh, created a number of losers, one big winner, and it has left Italy in a situation of deadlock or stalemate, uh, appearing to be ungovernable. Uh, and the background to this is that if you looked at the polls two weeks before the election, the mm -hmm. last polls that were allowed, uh, it looked like the center-left party, the Democrats, along with Mario Monti, the prime minister, he's an economist, and since November 2011, he's headed a technocratic, non-political government. Mm -hmm. He's also a former uh, uh, student uh, of uh, Yale. Oh, um, okay. Received his PhD here. Um, the expectation was that the, there would be a coalition between Monti's new coalition and uh, the center-left coalition. Uh, the election was held. Uh, the center-left did uh, quite badly in the election. They lost about uh, three and a half million voters compared with where they were hmm. uh, in 2008. Monti did relatively badly. Uh, the Berlusconi coalition, the center-right coalition, did better than everyone thought, uh, especially since he's been in and out of office since 1994. And um, plus so much scandal surrounds him. But uh, the net effect is the margin between the center-left and the center-right is very small. Mm -hmm. But now, here's where it gets sort of complicated <laughs> and interesting. In 2005, Italy changed its election laws so that it allows the largest coalition to get 54% uh, of the seats in the lower house of the parliament, mm -hmm. the chamber of deputies. So the center-left uh, coalition received 29.5% of the vote, but because they edged the Berlusconi coalition by less than a half a point, they got 340 seats in the chamber of deputies, mm -hmm. which looks like a safe majority to govern. But there's another problem, um, which is that Italy has a bicameral legislature with a Senate, and the Senate allocates the seats in a different way uh, in the vote. They give the coalition that wins each of the 20 regions 55% of the seats. The way it all worked out <laughs> is that there is no majority in the Senate. The left didn't get a majority in the Senate. The Berlusconi coalition didn't get a majority in the Senate. And Monti did so badly in the campaign, got about 10% of the vote, mm -hmm. that his coalition, his little coalition, uh, doesn't have enough seats to give either the center left or the center right a majority. So there's a stalemate, and it's not clear how a government will be formed. The My reason goodness. for this, uh, and the most interesting new development uh, in this election is the uh, rise of a new party called the Five Star Movement, mm -hmm. led by a former comedian and current day blogger named Beppe Grillo, uh, uh, who uh, <coughs> received over 25% of the vote. That party was formed in 2009. It's a populist party uh, anti-establishment, uh, anti-austerity, um, uh, skeptical about uh, the euro. Uh, it wants to reduce uh, the size of the parliament and reduce the pay of the parliamentarians mm -hmm. by 50 percent. 
Um, it's opposed to the privatization of water and wants water to remain public. Mm -hmm. It's for free access to the internet. Um, it ran its campaign entirely through the internet and through blogs um, uh, and rallies, large rallies throughout Italy. So does that mean that uh, with the internet being a large part of it, is it um, primarily younger people? It's running? younger people, disaffected people. <coughs> uh, they chose their candidates for parliament by an online primary. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a first. Uh, most of the parliamentarians who are elected by uh, the Five Star Movement will be people who don't have any political experience before. And they bridge all kinds of issues from the left to the right um, and, and share a few um, positions in common. Um, but the real problem is that um, the leader, um, who won't be in parliament, um, uh, is opposed to any coalition, either with the left or the right. So he has enough representatives in the Senate, about 54 senators mm -hmm. were elected uh, by the Five Star Movement, to form a coalition either with the left or the right. But um, he is opposed to doing that. So it's not clear what will happen um, right now with the government. Well, that is very curious <laughs> with the rules that have been changed i mean that seems to have serious implications for italian government moving forward i think perhaps will they be looking at again another change so in the event this happens again there are there's some protocol in place well that's one of the big issues that is uh, on the agenda and mm -hmm. the five star movement uh, and uh, uh, other coalitions as well want to change uh, the electoral law mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, I think want to reform it in a way that would avoid right, this right. kind of, of right. stalemate. I have to say given the recent history of Italian government I'm not surprised about the rise of the Five Star Movement and well, what it stands right. for. Well that's right. Uh, they represent a number of issues that are current that mm -hmm. will be uh, that attract people who are fed up with the established parties, mm -hmm. fed up with Berlusconi, who has been in and out of government for 20 years. Right. Uh, they are uh, especially fed up with the austerity that Italy has been going through that has been administered by uh, Mario Monti and his technocratic government. Mm -hmm. And do you think that's why Monti didn't fare better? Uh, I think that's a lot of it. Uh, when I say austerity, last year the economy uh, contracted by over 2 percent, so it went into rather steep contraction, meaning uh, that the unemployment rate rose, so it's now over 11 percent. Uh, in order to, um, it, it went into that contraction in part because Monty raised taxes mm -hmm. uh, and reduced spending in order to reduce the deficit. One of the things he did was he created and imposed, introduced a new uh, residential property tax that um, aggravated any number of Italians and in fact Berlusconi during the campaign offered to reimburse all of the Italians their property tax from last year to the tune of about four billion out of his own fortune which wow. probably uh, this was a you might say a new low in terms of buying votes mm -hmm. uh, in an election um, but the austerity has been a real issue in Italy, and it's the same kind of austerity we've seen in Spain and Greece, Greece uh, and Portugal and Ireland, uh, elsewhere in, in Europe. And uh, it's quite clear, I think, that the Five Star Movement and the center left both advocate an easing of austerity, and eventually they will find their way, I think, to some kind of coalition at least for the short term. But right now, uh, we are in a situation where Italy, if you read the headlines in the Italian papers, uh, you would see words such as ungovernable and um, uh, stalemate. Mm -hmm. Now, this kind of thing is nothing new to us. We've seen it in the House <laughs> of Representatives and the Senate, right. uh, but it is a problem uh, in Italy. Uh, yeah, clearly it was worked out in, in this country and I'm, I'm wondering what, how do you think it's going to be worked out? 
Well, ultimately. I, I think uh, what will happen for the time being, Monty is in power as, still in power office as a uh, caretaker government. Mm -hmm. On March 15th, uh, the new parliament will convene. Uh, and at that point, the president of uh, the republic, uh, Giorgio Napolitano, will uh, uh, lead the discussions uh, among the parties uh, to form a government. Um, Pier Luigi Bersani, who is the leader of the Democrats, the center-left party, has already suggested a minority government uh, in which the Democrat, uh, in which the Five Star Movement might join the Democrats uh, on an issue-by-issue -issue basis. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Beppe uh, Grillo uh, has said uh, he's not interested in a formal alliance with either big party, um, but we're likely to see a coalition that seems to me an ad hoc um, minority government with parliamentary support from the Five Star Movement mm -hmm. on an issue-by-issue -issue basis for a short period of time, uh, dealing with issues such as austerity, uh, easing that a bit, changing the electoral system, some of those um, mm -hmm. high-profile issues where the two parties converge. But for the longer term, uh, it seems unlikely, and the Five Star Movement uh, is advocating eventually a new govern uh, a new election mm -hmm. in a year or so, right, right. something like that. Well, you know, I'm curious what the Italian people think about this Five Star Movement because it seems to me they don't really have much experience governing. I mean, is is that an issue? Do you think? Well, it's, it's an interesting movement because it's characterized, I think, in the rest of the European press um, as a sort of, a, a, and Grillo personally is characterized as a buffoon. In fact, there was a bit of a problem in Germany. Uh, yesterday, the president had to cancel um, a lunch with the head of the Social Democratic Party, the, their candidate in the next German election this September because uh, that individual uh, said that Italy has two clowns uh, running and, and one being Berlusconi and the other one being uh, Beppe uh, Grillo. It is and, similar to a circus I have to and say. And the president uh, felt that was um, going too far mm -hmm. and a diplomatic um, uh, insult uh, sure. uh, and canceled, um, uh, canceled the lunch. I mean, the serious, the, the real problem is that you have a party now, the leading party in Italy got 29% of the vote and 54% of the seats. So the majority doesn't in any way reflect <coughs> the preferences of the population. Uh, the Democrats on the center left have a very wooden old figure leading it, a man who's been around for a long time, former communist. Uh, uh, former Minister of Industry, not very charismatic at all. They had a primary and defeated a young man, the mayor of Florence, who is much more charismatic. Berlusconi on the other side is someone who's a caricature of everything that many people think is wrong with Italy in mm -hmm. terms of um, conflicts of interest, uh, corruption, uh, so forth. Right. Um, and uh, so compared with all of that, uh, the, you have this um, new leader who's come on the scene and says exactly what a lot of people <laughs> are thinking. Mm -hmm. And he's um, gathered this agglomeration of voters and supporters who have many different issues, from mm -hmm. ecologists uh, to people concerned about the internet, to people concerned about the direct democracy, to people who uh, want to get out of the Eurozone mm -hmm. to people who are concerned about unemployment, uh, a whole range of issues. Um, L let me ask you this. How involved are the Italians in the election? What is, how many come out to vote, percentage-wise? Well, uh, in this election, about 75% wow, voted. That's very now, that high. looks really good. From <laughs> yes, our point does. of view, that looks great. But from the Italian um, point of view, that's the lowest turnout they've had. Wow. Uh, since 1946, so this was really. So they're very, they're very passionate about their elections. They are, but a lot of people uh, didn't come out uh, 
this time, uh, in part because the weather was lousy. There was snow in the north mm -hmm. and, and bad weather in the south. So there was some slight uh, reduction in sure. turnout because of that. But there were a lot of people who were angry, frustrated. Yeah. Uh, they don't trust the government. They don't trust the established parties. And I think this movement uh, was playing on all of that frustration sure. and anger. And that's really what uh, um, brought people to this new voice mm -hmm. in the political system. Now let me ask you this, with all of the swirling problems with the Euro, how is this situation, is it going to create more anxiety in, in terms of the debt crisis in Europe? Well it creates uh, a great deal of anxiety uh, because uh, as you said at the outset, um, after last summer when Mario Draghi said the European Central Bank will do whatever it takes to uh, keep the Eurozone going. Uh, there's been a collective sigh of relief and the Eurozone seems to have stabilized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, the crisis isn't over, but right now Europe is dealing with Cyprus, which is really a small issue compared with Greece and Spain and the issues uh, it was facing a mm -hmm. year ago. Uh, but this creates a huge problem, potentially. Uh, the, the prospect of instability in, Euro in, in Italy, mm -hmm. prospect of easing of austerity, which raises the prospect that perhaps uh, bond prices of the, Europe, of the Italian debt will drop, yields will increase, and perhaps we'll get to a situation where uh, Italy might need support down the road. Now the real problem is that Italy's debt is, public debt, is two trillion euros. Mm -hmm. And that's not billion, that's trillion. Yes, two that's trillion a lot euros. Of money. It's more public debt than Greece, Portugal, Ireland, and Spain put together. Um, and Italy is, um, to use the old cliche, it's too big to fail, and it's also too big to bail. Uh, and the problem is that what Draghi said last summer um, is, pr is predicated on a government agreeing to conditions for fiscal reform, structural reform, austerity policy, uh, a whole range of reforms to improve their financial and fiscal situation. If that happens, the European Central Bank will buy their bonds. But the question is, what happens if you have a government that doesn't want to negotiate mm -hmm. those conditions and what accept you, those conditions? Happens? Well, then the ECB won't come in and buy the bonds. Um, now, we haven't had that kind of situation yet, but the prospect of a government that would be easing on austerity, meaning the markets might get a little more concerned about whether uh, Italy can pay back its debt of two trillion euros, mm -hmm. uh, over the, over the near term and longer term, uh, raises a prospect of anxiety and a renewal of this, um, of this crisis that has now gone on for three years. So the first reactions uh, to the election, uh, the election took place on this previous Sunday and Monday. The first reactions on Tuesday were um, a, a sharp drop in in uh, stock markets and uh, increase in yields, bond yields uh, in Europe. Uh, it's settled down a bit now um, and, and I think more observers see the prospect of some kind of uh, patchwork uh, government for at least the short term. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of anxiety now that this is now reopening a crisis that most people had thought was settled. Mm -hmm. So do you think it will get worked out? I, th I think it will. I mean, there are a variety of options. One option would be in Italy, they could have a grand coalition mm -hmm. of the center left and the center right. That's sort of a very German kind of solution. They've done that in the past in Germany. Um, but these two parties, putting together the former, the Democrats, former communists with Berlusconi's party, is something that almost no one thinks can happen. Except, per except perhaps Berlusconi. Um, mm -hmm. Some observers have talked about a new election right away, but all of the parties, when they think about a new election, immediately calculate, will we do better or worse? 
and there's a real prospect for the established parties, they might do worse in the new election, and so they don't really want to go in that direction mm -hmm. either. So then that leaves you some kind of patchwork of a um, minority government uh, with parliamentary support uh, from Five Star. And actually, there is some precedent for that in, of all places, Sicily. Mm -hmm. uh, in Sicily, uh, the first breakthrough for the Five Star movement occurred last October in the regional election in Sicily, where they got 15 percent. Uh, and since then, there's been a center-left government operating with uh, a small centrist party and then with the big Five Star movement in Sicily, and it's working pretty well. And mm. so there is some possibility moving in that direction, um, um, perhaps with part of the Monti coalition added in mm -hmm. as well, although probably not Monti himself. He's seen as too much of a dour um, um, transmitter of austerity to the Italian right. people on behalf of Germany and Berlin, mm -hmm. which is the general that's the kind of language that we heard in the campaign from the Berlusconi camp and others that um, that this austerity was imposed by Germany, by Berlin, by the ECB, by the Europeans. But I do think that that's probably where we'll go, mm -hmm. uh, at least for a short term. But it wouldn't be surprising if we have another Italian election at about this time next year. Mm -hmm. Well, more to come, clearly. More we'll have to, to see how it shakes out. Thank you so much for being here with us today and uh, sharing your work. For more information about Professor Cameron and his research, please visit our website at yale.edu slash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale. Mm -hmm.